What's going on? My name is John Joe Lyons and today I'm here to present to you, by popular demand I might add, my review for a Serbian film. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Written and directed by, are you having a f***ing laugh? A Serbian film stars, all of these lot. After my last review, I put up a poll giving you guys the opportunity to decide what I was going to review next. I was pretty certain that Antichrist was going to win and even started writing my review because of that. Then something went terribly wrong and a Serbian film pulled out in front. Why? Why? This is one of the few films of this nature that I haven't ever seen and didn't really plan to see. I heard about the major story beats and I was good. Nah, I'm, I'm fine. This movie sits up there with Salo. And so now you're wondering why the f*** did you even put it on the list in the first place? I'm an idiot. So there you have it. Apparently you'd much rather me try and explain this. And please, I really, really mean it. This review is about to get really f***ing dark really f***ing quickly. So this is your last chance to turn back. By continuing on with the video, you are agreeing to have these concepts and content in your mind forevermore. You're also agreeing that you forego any right to complain to me as if I've done something wrong. This right now, this is your decision. Are we good? This is a Serbian film. The movie begins with two people having relations in an alleyway. He says he's gonna f*** her up and then we cut to this little boy watching this scene play out on the TV as he holds the DVD case in his hand. His father enters and it's revealed to be the man on screen, Milos. The boy's mother, Maria, follows behind, quickly turning off the film. She gets cross with Milos for leaving his films out but Milos doesn't seem to be too bothered. He then apologises, saying he only dug out the film because someone named Layla called, advising she wants to see him today. Maria takes the boy to get some toast when he asks what daddy was doing there. His mother tells him it's just like a cartoon for adults. And given how cartoonishly violent the film gets, this is less of a comment on porn and more of a direct assessment of the film itself. Milos turns the film back on and we watch as his grip on the DVD case tightens. Cut to Maria getting Peter ready for school. The pair sing as we cut to Milos placing the DVD back with the rest of his filmography. Maria enters and says she needs to pay for Peter's piano lessons. It's then the haunting piano score starts to emerge, punctuating the scene with an emotional tone that foreshadows the themes of hopelessness and melancholy. Milos doesn't have enough in his pocket, so he dips into another stash, handing it over. Peter and Maria say goodbye as we cut to a pub garden where Milos drinks. He's joined by Layla, who playfully scolds him for the whiskey. They embrace and make nice conversation about family and whatnot before getting down to business. She tells him it's for the foreign market, terribly professional and phenomenally paid. And if he accepts, his family will be settled until the end of Peter's life. She tells him the director's name is Vukmir and he'll be calling Milos in a few days. Layla then tries to give Milos a toy when they're joined by Milos' brother, the police officer Marco. Marco sits and comments on Layla's flawless skin, wondering which plastic surgeon he should thank, but she assures him she's all natural before biting his lip. Layla then tells Milos to remember her advice and leaves. Marco comments on her career as a porn star, mentioning she hasn't contacted her dealer in a couple of years and that she's probably got some new rich provider now. Milos says he'll alienate him from his friends if Marco keeps checking on them, to which he responds, he tells Milos to say hello to the kid and his beautiful mum pays for the meal and leaves. Milos then finishes his drink and quietly considers the proposition as he looks at the rabbit. Cut to Milos and Maria putting Peter to bed. Peter asks about the film he saw earlier with his dad in it and asks about his friend, the one he was beating in the video. I don't know if this is a translation issue or not, but that's pretty f***ing weird. This is how the child understands what was happening to the woman. He does not see it as an act of love, but one of violence, foreshadowing what's to come. The boy then speaks about getting feelings from the film, like wheels turning, a whole family. When asking if they have the same thing, the mother admits they do, that everyone does. Then gently tells him to go to sleep. Cut to Milos pouring himself a drink and Maria translating Swedish. They have a cute interaction, then Milos puts on a tape and gets on the bed. They talk about the job with Milos wondering why they would pay him big money. We then see they're watching one of Milos's old films. He calls it crap and Maria laughs, saying maybe they need the only porn star with a university diploma. She then asks if he misses it, to which he replies, Ne. <sighs> 
Maria asks why he hasn't discarded her like all the other girls, and Milos says it's because he loves her. He just f them. She asks if that means that he never wanted to f her, slaps him, and then they bang. As they do, the camera cuts between the couple and Milos's film, showing the difference between the performative and the real, the dispassionate and the genuine. They finish, and as they do, the sounds of the tape drop out, replaced with a beautiful string score. They kiss, and we cut to Milos waiting. He puts on his sunglasses as director Vukmir explains the next steps. He arrives and is greeted by Vukmir, who says it's an honour, then talks about how special Milos's right hand is, because it jerked such a special c Many a very good chance. Artist of f you know. Cut inside where Vukmir gets into a speech about the art of porn and how people disregard it, seeing it as a means to make people who can't get laid c He criticizes the filmmakers, calling them butchers, uncaring of the quality of product that they provide. He asks if Milos knows what proves there is art in porn. Ti. Ti Milos. Vukmir goes on, complimenting Milos on his technique, his rhythm, and his ability to break his partner down, then make them love him again. Milos asks if he would have seen any of Vukmir's work, but Vukmir just laughs, saying he's doing stuff that no one else is, just for select clients. Milos tries to find out what they'll be filming, but Vukmir is not willing to go into any further detail. Milos asks what he's supposed to do, and Vukmir says he must only stand before the cameras and do what he does, which Milos says he's getting tired of. It's then revealed by Vukmir that he knows Milos has been selling his body to support his family. So if the metaphor is that porn is supposed to be cinema, does that make being a prostitute TV? They are then joined by Vukmir's doctor who hands him the contract which he then passes to Milos. Milos seems hesitant when Vukmir asks him if something is wrong. Vukmir tells him that if he knew, he wouldn't be so good. Cut to Milos having a drink and considering his options. He notices a younger family a few seats over and watches them for a moment, envious of their happiness, their whole lives ahead of them. Cut to Milos arriving home as Maria sings to Peter. Cut to the couple in bed as they talk about Vukmir and the job. Milos calls Vukmir an artist philosopher with a grand plan and seems to desperately need him due to the massive amount of money he's offering. Maria asks how much and Milos won't tell her. She grabs his junk and he relents, whispering the number into her ear. We don't hear it, but watch as Maria's face goes from smiling to serious. Milos says that he refused the offer and the two joke about Maria leaving him for his brother. He then asks Maria if he should rent his d**k out to Vukmir to which she replies <laughs> Cut to Milos signing the contract. He and Vukmir drink champagne as Vukmir compliments Milos further, bringing up his ability to become erect at the drop of a hat Dennis Reynolds style and that he always gets the shots needed on the first take. Cut to Milos going for a run. This scene is intercut with shots of Milos in his room, naked, attempting to meditate. He then glances over at the bottle of Jack Daniels for a moment before closing his eyes again. Cut to Milos' is home. Markov is asking Maria to translate some Russian for him, and she says it will take a few days. As they talk, he stares at her, clearly infatuated. He watches her eat an apple, and when she offers him one, he whispers yes, but upon handing him the apple, he declines because, of course, that isn't what he meant. He says he misses female company, and Maria jokes he can always arrest a good-looking woman. Marco then admits he doubts he'll ever have the real thing like Milos and Maria. She tries to reassure him, saying that he's given up too early and that women around here love a man in uniform. Marco then excuses himself, going to the bathroom. Cut to Milos running and meditating and then back to Marco as he knocks one out. He finishes and we cut back to the villa as a bald man and two goons leave. They cross paths with Milos with the bald man staring at him as they do. Milos watches him get into a car and the score takes a more sinister tone. Cut to Milos on a balcony where he's joined by Vukmir. He refuses the offer of a drink and then asks when they start and Vukmir says three days. Milos admits that he's not comfortable not knowing what they're planning to shoot, but Vukmir laughs this off, saying that Milos is a porn actor. Who wants to know what is happening in the film? It's a little absurd, isn't it? Milos says it's a lot of money to leave to chance, but Vukmir says that his clients know what they want and he knows what he is doing. Cut to Milos and Peter. They again talk about the wheels turning and what to do when they do. Cut to Milos leaving the house, getting in a car and being driven back to the villa. Upon arriving, the driver gives him an earpiece and tells him to get out. Outside, he's joined by a silent cameraman and then told through the earpiece to enter the building relaxed. At the door, Milos finds a sign reading Home for Abandoned and Orphan Children, and as he opens the door, he's faced with another silent cameraman. Inside, he's told by Vukmir 
Vladimir to walk slowly ahead and be natural. He follows these instructions, walking through the halls, eventually happening upon a woman who beckons him towards her. They continue down the hall when they see a young girl sitting on some steps. She is soon joined by her mother who shouts at her for going off with the villains before dragging her away. Milos watches this as the woman rests her head on his shoulder. There's a moment of silence which is only broken by the gentle voice of Vakmir as he says, And it's here where you start to really feel the tension ramping up. We know something terrible is coming, but the film really takes its time and I super appreciate that. Cut to Milos walking into his bedroom where his wife sleeps. He gently touches her skin and she awakens asking what it was like. He says fine and tells her they were filming in an orphanage. She again asks where and we cut back to set. Here we see the mother fighting the other woman for her child who she also slaps. The mother is eventually dragged away by the goons with the woman leading the young girl into another room. She then comes back out and hugs Milos under the watchful eye of the camera. Cut to them entering a dark room followed by the cameraman. They kiss and the woman circles Milos before ducking down south. Milos reaches completion in record time and we cut to him at home. He calls Maria who just picked up Peter from class and is now taking him to a costume party. She asks if Milos wants to join but he says he needs some sleep and wishes them a good time. Cut to Marco answering the phone. It's Milos who asks him to do a background check on Vakmir and his whole crew. Marco asks if everything is okay and Milos says yes, for now. He asks his brother the same and Marco replies... He hangs up and we see he's been getting his sucked the whole time. In the background we can hear he is watching a home movie of one of Peter's birthday parties and just as Peter is about to open his present from his uncle, the film cuts to one of Milos' porn films. The woman Marco's with stops fellating him and they both watch the screen with Marco asking how Milos stays so hard for so long. She says, if you don't know, I can't help you. Cut back to Milos drinking at home. He's joined by Layla who again cusses him for drinking and then asks what was so urgent. He tries to find out what they're shooting but Layla continues to talk up Vakmir as some sort of cinematic genius. He asks what she's done and she says don't take it all on me because I f animals for art's sake while you can't take a bit of uncertainty. Layla says it'll be better than the crap he's filmed more recently and he says that he misses that crap because at least he knew what he was filming. She then opens her legs and asks him if he misses this, meaning her sideways ham sandwich. Milos doesn't react and Layla tells him that he's losing it. Cut to later as Maria wakes up a sleeping Milos. He asks how the party was and Peter enters swinging his balloon sword. He starts hitting his father with it when we cut to Milos blindfolded in a car. He enters a room to find one of the goons slapping the mother and berating her. He leaves and she crawls over to Milos and cracks on. It's then that Milos notices the daughter watching and pulls the mother off of him. The daughter is wearing a blue and white dress invoking feelings of Alice in Wonderland and that's interesting when paired with the rabbit gift that Layla gave Milos earlier. Milos shouts he can't work like this when the goon grabs him from behind. As he does this, the mother bites down on his dick. The goon tells Milos to hit her, which he does until she lets go. The mother then starts furiously whacking him off until he spooges in her face. <laughs> Are we having fun here, people? It gets so much fucking worse. Vakmir then enters clapping. He congratulates Milos, who knocks out the goon and leaves the room. Cut to the hall as Milos tells Vakmir he's not beating women in front of their children on camera. Vakmir says she can handle it and that he would never do a thing against one's will. Milos responds that they're doing it against his will and he won't stand for any kind of torture. Vakmir says this. And then opens the door to the office, Milos signed his contract in, saying Cut to Marco explaining Vakmir's history. Apparently his name is Vakmir Vakmir. He worked as a psychologist in an orphanage until 1992, then moved into children's programming of the state TV. He then allegedly worked with the state security until his trace was lost in Japan. Marco says Milos is working with an educated man and who are you going to trust if not a child psychologist? Cut to Milos naked in the dark room. He sees the goon circling the unconscious mother and is then ushered toward her with this great big fluorescent dildo. When he gets to her, she snaps to life, grabbing his junk. Cut to Milos waking up from the nightmare. He downs a glass of Jack, then kisses his family and goes to the window, seeing the car ready to pick him up. Maria says he doesn't need to go, that he could just do it over the phone, but Milos says that wouldn't be fair. They hug and Milos leaves, this time getting into his own car and driving off with Vakmir's driver following him. Cut to the office where Milos announces his retirement. Vakmir asks if there's any way that he could convince Milos otherwise, but he says no. He says he can't work with kids or in a kindergarten, and if he'd known of these details before, it only would have led to him quitting sooner. Vakmir then goes on another speech calling Serbia one whole sh 
kindergarten. A bunch of kids abandoned by their parents. He asks if Milos knows what that feels like. He says him and this family, Milos is so willing to leave are the only warrant of this nation's survival. That they are the backbone of this country's economy. That only they can prove this country is still alive. Milos calls Vukmir insane and asks how all of this connects to pornography and Vukmir laughs saying no, 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 not pornography but life. That's life of a victim. Love, art, blood, flesh and soul of a victim transmitted to a world who has lost all that and now is paying to watch from the comfort of an armchair. Milos says judging from what he's getting paid, Vukmir's work obviously sells well, to which the filmmaker responds He says the victim is the priciest sell in this world. The victim feels the most and suffers the best. Vukmir calls Serbia a nation of victims, to which Milos responds they are too R-worded and he will not be a victim because of that. At this, Vukmir laughs and says Milos is the only one on this production that isn't a victim. And here we are folks, the start of what will be a cinematic experience you will likely never ever forget. To be fair to the movie, it's taken us a full 56 minutes to get to this point, building tension, letting us get to know the characters, to care for some and to be intimidated by others, to take in the environment and the cinematic texture that the setting provides. Every detail up until this point is there to set the stage of what's to come. And now things are about to get awful. I guess you could say this is your third warning. It's the last one. We're right here now, okay? Here we go. A video plays with a pregnant woman laying on a table. She starts giving birth as a man approaches and he f***s the baby and the mum loves it. Moving on! Milos leaves, well f yeah, and Vukmir screams after him naming this new genre newborn porn. For f**k's sake. Cut to Milos driving home as the words of Vukmir echo in his mind. He turns on the radio and grabs his for a bit as the announcer tells us tomorrow will be the 18th of May, where we'll witness a new Serbian jet set extravaganza. He then stops at a red light. The doctor appears and then Milos starts whacking, opens the window, grabs her boobs and she starts whacking. The score begins to peak and then this happens. <laughs> to Milos waking up in bed with a bloody nose. We see more flashes of violence and then he gets up, checking himself for injuries and noticing the date. May 21st, meaning he's missed three to four days. Oh dear. Milos calls out for Maria but gets no answer. He calls her phone, finding it in the living room. We have more flashes of awful sh and then cut to Milos peeing blood. Cut to a knife on Milos's junk and then to him looking in the mirror. He leaves the house and discovers the goon's car parked outside. Milos then finds the keys in his pocket. And the blood and cum soaked game is afoot! Cut to Milos driving. He calls his own number and is told the line is not available. He then calls his brother and is told the same. Cut to Milos pulling up at the same red light as before. We then flash back to the doctor approaching, getting felt up and getting in the car. She drives, whacking as she does as our unhinged Milos motorboats her. Cut back to the present as Milos drives off. He arrives at the villa, weapon in hand, and goes inside, finding the building abandoned. He finds a room with a bed and blood on the walls, and then we flash back to the doctor, delivering him to Vukmir in handcuffs. It is then Vukmir reveals that Milos has been dosed with a special concoction made by the doctor. The goons then bring in the mother from earlier and cuff her to the bed. They then give Milos his earpiece, strip him, and let him go. As this goes on, the director insults the woman, calling her dirty junkie scum and telling Milos to hit her, which he does. The slaps turn to punches as Milos's hatred of the woman intensifies. And it's then that he's handed a machete. Vukmir again tells Milos to hit the woman and he brings the machete down, decapitating her while f***ing her. And he only stops when the goons have to literally pull him off. Cut to present day as Milos vomits. He washes his face and then finds a whole load of tapes in Vukmir's office. He puts in the first one and we see Layla approaching a donkey. Hey, what the f man? Milos grabs the tape and camera and gets in his car. He tries to make another call but is again told the line has been disconnected. Cut to Milos in a part where he watches the rest of the tapes. The first showing Vukmir setting up for the decapitation scene. We then see one of the goons rape a sleeping Milos before being dosed up with more drugs. Cut to Layla complaining to Vukmir about drugging Milos. She says they could have just hurt the kid to get him to do what they wanted but instead they drugged up a genius and ruined the whole thing. Vukmir starts off on a speech about wanting to release Milos from all fear but Layla interrupts with a grab of the balls and tells him that this is not art. You're no longer an artist. She tells him she won't work for him any more and neither will Milos as she plans to take him home. She leaves and Vukmir looks at the camera before the tape ends. I'm sure she's gonna be fine. He puts in the next tape and we see Layla naked and chained. She's covered in blood and when we get closer we see why. She's had all of her teeth pulled out of her head. Good lord. That 
that's when this absolute unit enters and suffocates Layla with his d Milos steps away, falling apart, when we see a flash of Maria covered in blood telling us to get away from her. Milos realises he has to know more and returns to the tapes. In the next, we see Milos on a sofa with the daughter and this woman. The woman has a speech about what a c the daughter's mother was, how she desecrated a war hero's memory, and how with no man in the house, he must make the daughter a woman. They all look at each other for a bit when Milos grabs a knife and threatens to cut his own d off. With that knife, you'll be there for a while, mate. Milos then jumps right out the window. Vakmir orders his men to give chase and the video ends. Cut to Milos driving and doing this. to cut with scenes of him running from the villa. He sees this girl who may or may not be the girl from the villa and then we cut to the escape at night as Milos goes into a shop. At the back there's an inexplicably attractive butcher chopping meat and another at the main register. Milos steals a bunch of phone cards and we cut to him at the payphone. He calls Marco asking for help and tells him where he is before stumbling further down the street and hiding in an alley. Cut to present as Milos finds the alley. In the past Milos watches a woman being harassed by a couple of boys. She notices him and then we cut back to see him the boys then start kicking the shit out of him as Vakmir and his boys turn up. The goon breaks both their necks and then this happens. Хорошо, хорошо. <laughs> Milos is then shoved into the car. We cut to present day Milos as Vakmir talks about goat f***ing and the monks that care for them using their c**t's bread spread or some other such bullshit. Vakmir calls Milos his he go and we cut back and forth from past to present landing in the past as Milos is driven to another location. Vakmir once again calls Milos his he go and says he'll provide a fitting end for him. We see him dragged into this nondescript last place you'll ever see alive then cut to present as Milos enters. He walks the corridors eventually finding this mess. We then flash back to see what happened here. Milos is sat on the bed by the goon and then leaves as the doctor injects him with more horny juice. Milos then reaches his limit for this bullshit and returns the favour stabbing the doctor in the neck. <laughs> She passes out, foaming at the mouth, and Milos escapes before quickly being caught and led away naked. Cut to present day as Milos enters a huge room and discovers a whole bunch of dead bodies. He takes in the sight and notices the camera as we cut back to the past. Here we see Milos brought to the bed where two bodies lay face down, their heads covered. Cut to Milos having sex with one of them and then moving on to the other as the film crew watches, smiling. He's then joined by this masked brother, the same one who suffocated Layla as he f***s the first body. Vakmir then goes around removing all of their face coverings. Uh, the Tonk guy next to him is his brother, Marco. Marco, <clears throat> the one Marco's f***ing is Milos' his wife, and the one that Milos is f***ing is his son. Truly the most horrific thing I've ever seen, ever. Marco finishes and the men look at each other as between them, Vakmir calls this scene a real happy Serbian family. Everyone looks at each other when the doctor enters the room. Her lower region is covered in blood as is the pipe that she's holding. Draw your own conclusions. She reaches for Milos before collapsing to the floor dead. Milos then attacks Vakmir, smashing his head off the ground over and over again until he's pulled off by the goons. <laughs> Maria jumps on Marco and bites into his neck as Milos gets the shit kicked out of him and Vakmir tells him that's it Milos, that's the cinema. We see Maria rip Marco's throat out with her teeth as Milos grabs a gun off a goon and opens fire, killing two of them and wounding Russia who charges at him. Maria grabs this sculpture thing and brings it down on Marco's face multiple times until he's 100% dead as Milos punches Raja exposing his missing eye. Milos then shoves his d right into the guy's eye socket through to his brain killing him. Vakmir <laughs> says that's film as Maria grabs a knife screaming at Milos to get away from her. Milos knocks her out and we cut to him driving his family home. He locks them in a room, goes upstairs where he tries to kill himself but finds the gun empty. He then passes out on the bed and we cut back to present day. <laughs> <laughs> Milos sobs, smashing his brother's face in some more and then we cut to him in the car driving home. Inside he unlocks the door and opens it finding Maria holding Peter. Milos approaches them as Maria moves away slightly. He sits and hugs them as tears roll down his cheek. Cut to later on as Maria sings to Peter, Milos in the shower, the family in bed, the family at breakfast and finally Milos holding the gun. Maria puts her hand on his and they look at each other with Maria smiling. Cut to the three getting into bed. They get in close as we see Milos has the gun pointed at Maria's back. The parents share a look and then we cut outside as the gun goes off.
Cut to the family dead as we see that they are not alone. With them is a director and two more goons. And I'm only just thinking this now while I'm filming, but I swear that's the same ball guy that we saw exiting the villa earlier. The director says, come on, and one of the goons starts to get his d out. The director then says, start with the little one, for f sake. We see one final shot of a happy Serbian family and the film cuts to black. The end. What a mind f a Serbian film is a movie that I really wasn't looking forward to seeing, for obvious reasons. I was ready to hate it for the more gratuitous moments, but as the credits rolled, I found myself surprised at how much I liked most of it. My biggest surprise was just how well put together the film is, with direction and cinematography continuing to impress throughout. In keeping with the pace of the story, these elements are presented at first in a fairly mundane fashion. It's only after we hit the 56th minute that things take a more extreme turn and this is perfectly represented in a sudden stylistic shift to utter insanity. The camera shots are also really visually interesting. Long takes of Maria and Milos in bed, the door opening to the new cameraman. The filmmakers aren't just making an extreme horror film here, they're making a film. The score was another highlight. It takes you on a journey, starting with the emotional tones of the early scenes, giving way to the more hardcore instrumentals before once again returning to those same musical cues at the end. This mirrors the emotional journey we take from upset to angry to defeated, only for the cycle to start over. Of all the madness this film has to offer, it was the score that surprised me the most. There's a few serious bangers on here that I really enjoyed. A Serbian film at its narrative core is a story we've heard a million times before. Our hero, a legend in his field, experiences money problems and in order to support his family must return for one last job. Then for a little extra spice you go all memento for the last 40-ish minutes introducing a mystery element which allows us to find out the horrible truth in real time as Milos does, thus getting closer to his wrecked emotional state. The main theme here is absolute hopelessness and by the end the message is that everyone is fucked even after death and if you do fight back, enacting bloody revenge on your captors and manipulators in their place will appear another, just as indifferent and unforgiving, ready to step over your corpse and continue the cycle. In terms of the violence, the decision to show what the film shows feels to me like the filmmaker is desperate for attention, not in the narcissistic look at me way, but in a more pleading last cry for help. The creator is presenting the audience with a scream that cannot be ignored. As Vukmir says in the film, they make this art to show they are still alive, that they are not to be forgotten. That being said, I think the baby scene and the inclusion of the son at the end are just so super unnecessary. You could argue that their message is one that requires this type of horror to fully illustrate what they're talking about, but in my opinion, when you veer off into that territory, you run the risk of your message being drowned out by the spectacle. After watching that scene, unfortunately, I'm no longer interested in your message and more just want to punch the filmmaker in the face. While this movie should be known as an unforgiving metaphorical look at life as a Serbian, in the end, it's just a movie with that baby scene and to me, that is a failure. It's well made and interesting for the most part, but in the end, a Serbian film is not for me and most likely not for you or anyone else. So that was my review for a Serbian film. Have you seen it? If you have, let me know in the comments below what you thought. But yeah, anyway, like, share, subscribe. My name's John Joe Lyons and the world is an awful, awful, dark, hopeless place. Happy Christmas.